like we have the CEO of uh, Exprivia Group, which is the, the biggest Italian ICT companies. And we have the opportunity to have a representative for Leonardo Group, Mr. Vitali. Say hi to him. We have the opportunity to have here Mr. Calabrese from Frascold Group. And we will have soon other two guests from Comao and from Casapa. And we have here, uh, here with all our heart, but in the spirit, we have Mr. Scaglia and Mr. V from our Hanoi office. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure to see you. And uh, without further uh, uh, discussing uh, about the presentation and so on, we're going to move forward in this webinar. We decided to do the webinar Invest in Vietnam because it's a, a hot topic. More and more of our friends and clients ask us about the possibilities to move the uh, business uh, uh, from Italy into Vietnam or as well from uh, uh, China to move some of their production facilities into this interesting country. We'll have the opportunity with Filippo to have a general overview of uh, the legal background and framework of the country. And after we will have uh, Mr. Vitran, our partner of Hanoi office, we will uh, go into detail regarding uh, the uh, certificate of origin made in Vietnam, how to get it. Without any further discussion, I pass the word to our uh, Hanoi office. Filippo, go ahead. From uh, the Grand Partners, and here with me there is uh, Mr. VP, our Vietnamese partner of uh, our Hanoi office. So let's start with the presentation. I will now share our desktop. And before starting, I would like to have confirmation that you can all see our desktop. Okay. Okay. Go. <coughs> As you well know, the topic of uh, this uh, webinar is uh, invest in Vietnam is the right time to move in. This will be an uh, introduction to the, mer to the market and the business growing in uh, Vietnam and uh, how to start a business, how to invest uh, in uh, Vietnam. At first, in this presentation, there is a quick introduction of uh, our BP group, uh, our company, and uh, we will uh, just uh, pass uh, past uh, in uh, this course of the slides because you already well know our company, our BP group, and our services. Just to mention, there is a BP Legal Council. PSC Advisory for tax and accounting, ISTA for marketing and uh, uh, for marketing and event planning, and Chas and Better for uh, connecting with uh, universities throughout the world in China and uh, more international opportunities for young students and undergraduates. So, Chas and Better here. If you well know our excellent services and our professional experience in the uh, group. So, oh, okay, great. Uh, for, again, invest in Vietnam. China to the Vietnamese country. This is the country is around the seven percent of growth, and this country is uh, transitioning from uh, a 
market-based economy to a market-based economy from uh, and uh, economic sector that we change uh, from mainly agriculture and fishing to more and more focus uh, on uh, industry and uh, service. So we identify this uh, as the main reason in the advantages and uh, the companies of that uh, have pushed them to move from China or from other country to Vietnam. As I said before, high economic growth, stable GDP on an average of 7% in the last year. Mm -hmm. the second point, one of the main uh, and well accused of things among the companies, is the domestic market. There are <clears throat> 100 million population in, uh, there is 100 million population in Vietnam, one third of them belong to the middle class, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, labor of uh, employable people, employees, uh, currently 70% 70, 70 of the population is under 35 years of age, so is uh, in an employable uh, age, uh, recently graduated, uh, and uh, people ready to start a family with all the big market growing in Vietnam. That it has a strategic location because it's located, Vietnam is located in the heart of the Pacific region and it is in distance of one hour, two hour by flight to any other countries in the, in the region, not to mention the north border with directly to China. As I said before, lower salary between uh, for uh, lower average salary for uh, employees in Vietnam compared to the other countries in the, in the region and again compared also to China. Last cost, stable politics, uh, more and more incentives are coming uh, for uh, companies that uh, open uh, and decide to move uh, to China to, to invest to, to Vietnam, to invest in Vietnam and global economic integration because uh, we will mention it better later but uh, um, Vietnam has uh, signed uh, has many different future agreements with all the countries in the region and to every people. And uh, as for the 2019, these are the main sector invested by foreign companies. By far, the most invested, the cover more than half of the total of the FDIs, is the processing industry and manufacturing industry. This, uh, while the FDI partners for Vietnam is are more located in the Southeast Asia region, as uh, the first, uh, the first two are mainly South Korea and Japan, South Korea. I believe uh, that the most contributor to these statistics uh, is uh, by Samsung, Samsung that is that uh, it actually is uh, located uh, near Hanoi, uh, it's like uh, one hour by car close to Hanoi, uh, it's uh, back in in the industrial zone close to Hanoi. There are more than 300 industrial parks in all Vietnam. As you can see, they are located. Uh, <clears throat> they are located. We can we can divide the whole country in the three different uh, region region or area. The north with uh, Hanoi in the middle and the highway that connects directly across the border to China and to the Haiphong and Hailong maritime ports in the north that are here pointed uh, with uh, this blue dot. <laughs> Danang in the middle, <coughs> it's a fast growing city, is uh, one of the third, third fast growing city in uh, the country with a uh, key important maritime port. And in this, uh, um, there is a Ho Chi Minh city that uh, is uh, located in the middle of the map. And, uh, as you can see, uh, as you can see, can you hear me? Can I hear you well? Yes. Let's quick check before moving on. Yes. Yes. Okay.
motion. It's gone. It's buried. So, sector in uh, new highway, new railroads, uh, expansion of uh, airports and expansion of uh, maritime ports. Now this uh, is a statistic on uh, the average rental of this factory, quite obviously in Vietnam. But this price you can see in the chart are uh, in US dollar per square meter per month. As you can see in uh, the three with the uh, ma è sempre così? quando si fanno i... high, high, grand town, red wheel factory in Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi it's become less, lower and lower the far as we get from these three main locations this chart, as you can see in this chart this chart shows the percentage of the business sector these are pointed out in blue and red and again I'm not busy on the direction which employee people in service and industry and construction the Mekong River Delta is the region close to Ho Chi Minh and also the southeast is uh, as indicated in this chart, and uh, they are slowly and gradually transition to the standards set for Ho Chi Minh City. This chart, instead, as I said in the first slide, one of the main reasons for companies relocating to Vietnam is the lower uh, average salary per average salary. As you can see in this chart, Vietnam has the as uh, half uh, the worker salary for Thailand and uh, close to one fifth uh, to Singapore. Uh, the, the law of Vietnam established and set uh, three different tiers for uh, minimum uh, wage uh, salary and uh, for the so salary in which salary is 165 US dollar per month and is low decrease in the second tier second tier region while in the other region of the other country of the, of the country is one hundred I believe one hundred and thirteen US dollar per month. So even in the high developed zone like Hanoi or I think Ho Chi Minh City Again, the mean wage salary is uh, lower by far, almost half of them is uh, currently in China. As per instead the investment incentives, uh, as uh, you can see from this chart, uh, the standard fee, the standard rates for corporate income tax is set at uh, 20%. There are other different uh, incentives uh, that provide uh, reduction or exemption for uh, at uh, 70%, 15%, 10%. That can be applied right from the start uh, for the duration of the whole investment for the whole period, or uh, that can last for a limited time, in limited time like for 10 years or for 15 years. Other exemption are and the reduction on corporate tax are granted for in import tax exemption. And on goods imported and fixed asset on the raw materials and the supply or components used for the, during the whole project. Other exemption and reduction of the tax rates are, grant, are granted on the land, land rents and uh, land uh, 
Vietnam has uh, undersigned and become the 27 when uh, Vietnam entered the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and uh, for until uh, recently, more recently and more, more significant uh, membership in the ASEAN, which uh, involves uh, all the country for the South East and Pacific region, and uh, the free trade agreements with the US uh, that uh, Basically, during this uh, period of uh, this few uh, trade war, as they call it, in Asia, between China and the US, uh, we can see that Vietnam has uh, almost uh, a free trade agreement with uh, the US. The last and the, the most recent, which uh, is uh, currently under review, and, the, and it is expected to, be, to enter in force uh, in the 2019, this year, it should have entered, should be signed, the final draft should have been signed in June, but due to the European elections, it's all shifted in the second half of the year, but it will be signed within the end of 2019, and it provides an immediate cut and reduction of custom fee by the 85 and 65 percent for import and export and export between uh, EU and Vietnam that after the uh, initial period of 7 years and 10 years uh, it will gradually become uh, the 100% uh, exemption. Now again, we have to mention that uh, on top of that uh, there is also the situation of uh, trade war. This could be between uh, China and uh, the US, it all started in the 2017, slowly, gradually, and it escalated quickly in 2018 with the first fee of 10% uh, on uh, consumer goods and intermediate goods and other different rate in other different uh, uh, materials. And in 2019, it was raised from 10% to 25% on consumer goods and intermediate goods. This uh, is uh, probably one of the main, the most, uh, re the main reason for Chinese company or company operating in China relocating uh, in uh, Vietnam. It has grown uh, largely in, uh, the la in the end of uh, 2018 and uh, the first six months of uh, 2019 has already more than doubled the FDI coming, the investment, the, the relocating coming from China in Vietnam. China, the trade between China and Vietnam, China is still the most, the largest partner for trading of import export goods between Vietnam and Vietnam. The second is the EU, the European Union, and the fourth is the U.S. This uh, is uh, on, a scale, on an average, uh, I believe, uh, uh, China cover for uh, around 15% uh, of the total trade uh, between Vietnam and foreign countries. So I hope uh, everything clear. This uh, was a uh, panoramic uh, of the current situation for Vietnam market with our business. Now I shall uh, pass the word to my colleague, our partner, uh, Mr. B, that will uh, explain uh, better which are the steps for investing in Vietnam and to open a business in Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Filippo. Thank you. Grazie, Filippo. Thank you. Grazie. It's a pleasure now to have our uh, Mr. B. Thank you, B. By way of introduction, hello everyone. Um, my last name is Sunil. The presentation and very interesting about how to do business in Vietnam. And my understanding is that the client just wants to, uh, just if they want to move to Vietnam, the first thing in hand is to ask how to set up their business in the environment where they are not familiar with. So our job here is today to give a very brief introduction on how you establish 
uh, Jeff Smith here in Vietnam, subject to regulation of the local law. Under uh, <clears throat> the law of Vietnam, we have certain form of investment, and the foreign investment, uh, foreign investor first, if they want to Vietnam, they are not confident enough to establish the company in the first place, then they can consider establish a representative office. And the representative office has plays a role as a liaison uh, or communication office for the investor to get to know the environments of business and investment in Vietnam. And when the foreign investor that familiar with the business in Vietnam, they can consider uh, the other option to establish either the company in Vietnam or decide the business corporation contract. So when they establish the company in Vietnam, which is mostly the form of investment that the foreign investor choose, they have like two options. The first one, they can establish a joint venture, the joint venture with a local company in Vietnam, or the second choice is they establish the company that they own 100%. So I will go to its form of investor to give more information and to give like a deep analysis of its option of investment that the foreign investor want to know. And the last option, <coughs> the foreign investor want to know maybe the business cooperation contract. So business cooperation contract is long time ago is the form of investment, but now it's no longer uh, popular in Vietnam because the foreign investor have the full right to establish the company. And business cooperation contracts only exist in some business sector that the the foreign investor is restricted to do the investment in Vietnam. So it's a very, even in very limited case, and later I will uh, give more information about it. Um, firstly, we go for the representative office, and the representative office, you know, is just the office for communication and for market testing purpose, and Normally, the foreign investor first will come to Vietnam, they can consider establishing the representative office. But you know, the representative office is just uh, a communication office whereby the foreign investor can um, get to know and understand the environment of business and investment in Vietnam. And then they, they, they don't need to make a lot of money to, you know, to, to set up the is the administrative office, and they just need only some personnel to run the office. And uh, one of the things that the foreign investor should pay attention is that the representative office is not uh, is not allowed to carry out any business activity, and they are not allowed to make any progress because it they just remain at the, the communication office of the foreign investor. So uh, if the foreign investor, they are confident enough to uh, to make investment in Vietnam. They can to establish the company in Vietnam by way of establishing either the joint venture company or the wholly foreign owned enterprises. The first one is joint venture. So joint venture is company that established between the foreign investor and the local investor. So there exists the joint venture agreement between the foreign investor and the local investor. So if the two investors sign the joint venture agreement, they are going to set up the joint venture company and under the form of joint venture company, uh, each party will have to negotiate on the term and condition of the joint venture company, how to manage such company under the law of Vietnam. And in this case, and in this case, the foreign investor have to deal with the Vietnamese local partner for every matter of the company. So the joint venture is required in certain business uh, sector and that require the cooperation with the Vietnamese investor um, uh, to do the business in a uh, mutual uh, benefit for the good party. So I can uh, tell you more about the joint venture. That the joint venture have some advantage, advantages because 
uh, firstly, you have the Vietnamese partner, if they are the trusted one, you will have more knowledge and more network uh, of the Vietnamese market. So that is advantage that you can consider. But the other way is disadvantage, because sometimes you have to deal with even the Vietnamese partner to make a decision for the company. And a foreign investor in this case not uh, all the time can control or manage the joint venture company and make the company just go in their own direction. So this means that they have like only uh, they are always two partners, the foreign investor and the foreign investor, and every time these two partners have to deal with each other to make the common decision. So this is also one of the disadvantage. Uh, for the joint venture, and sometimes they are not very flexible to make a decision. And we move on to the wholly foreign-owned enterprise. This is the most common and the most popular form of investment in Vietnam right now. So the foreign investor, they are free to accept to the Vietnamese market, and then if they can set up the wholly foreign-owned enterprise in Vietnam, that means that they have the subsidiary established in Vietnam and then they have total control of the wholly foreign owned company in Vietnam. So uh, the foreign investor, very, they prefer to this option because they can control, first of all, 100% of the company of, and the second of all, they can secure 100 of their investment in Vietnam. And that in terms of decision making process, the wholly foreign-owned company is very easy to make the decision because a foreign investor control 100% of what you don't do to deal with any other party to make the decision. It's very quick, very fast, and self-control. So that is all the anti-wholly foreign-owned enterprises in Vietnam. And this is the most popular uh, form of investment right now. And in terms of the procedure to setting to set up a company in Vietnam, um, we will tell you the first, like the that normally there are two stages. There are two stages for establishment of the company in Vietnam. The first one we call licensing stage. In the licensing step, once the foreign investor set up the company in Vietnam, they are required to obtain two certificates. The first one is investment investment registration certificate, and the second one is enterprise registration certificate. So in the old law back to, to single, there is only one certificate for the foreign investor when they set up the company in Vietnam, which we call the investment license. But now under the new law, uh, four years ago, Vietnam adopted the new law, and the new law they just require two certificates, and then this might more difficult for the foreign investor, I know. But um, under the under the purview of the government, they just want to separate like two areas for management. First one for, for uh, the investor want to set up the company in Vietnam, they will have to carry out one project. So the project needs the investment for which registration certificate. And if they set up the company in Vietnam, the company is subject to the law on enterprise. And under the law on enterprises, they have to get an enterprise registration certificate. So the foreign investor have to obtain two certificates, one investment certificate for their investment projects, and the other certificate mm -hmm. is enterprise registration certificate for their company set up in Vietnam. So there are like two kind of certificate that foreign investor have to obtain. And for the investment registration certificate, it is about 15 days to get the certificate. And for enterprise registration certificate, uh, it's about three working days. And for certain business, sometimes the foreign investor have to get sub license. Sub license is only for some business sector that fall within the investment condition under the law of Vietnam. For example, the foreign investor, they, if they, uh, they set up the company to engage in some business that require some condition, for example, retailing. 
Return in Vietnam that require some other license, special license, we call sub license to do the business, which we call the business license that they obtain from the other licensing authority. So, uh, in the first step, in the first step of our licensing authority, uh, licensing step, you have to work with the licensing authority to get like uh, investment registration certificate, enterprise registration certificate, and for some uh, special business, you have to get the sub license. So this is a whole process, and it sometimes it takes from one month, uh, more or less, but it's about one month to get a license. And they're talking about the license, and uh, they have some post licensing steps. The second one is post licensing steps, such as a company corporate seal, and op opening of the bank account, and obtaining the tenant code, and something like that. We call post licensing step, but it is uh, minimal work, and we uh, can help the client to get all the approval very quickly. And also, when the foreign investor they set up the company in Vietnam, they have to care about some trademark protection. And some trademark protection does to protect the IP right, intellectual uh, property right of the foreign investor. Something uh, that uh, foreign investors really need to care about when they do business in Vietnam. And uh, this is very important because. Uh, somehow, the foreign investor, they set up the company in Vietnam, but they uh, don't uh, pay, pay much attention to the trademark protection, and it incurs a lot of uh, cost and, and occur a lot of problems at a later stage to when they have to protect the trademark protection uh, or any violation to their, their IP right. Uh, and we can give you more some more uh, information about trademark protection, and I believe that you, we put all together in the slide. But uh, in the uh, slide, the protection we can uh, tell you that you can, if the foreign investor get the certificate that certify their trademark protection, then if I have valid uh, about ten years. Uh, after the filing, and uh, it can be renewed for many consecutive year term. And the procedure is uh, not very uh, uh, difficult. Uh, you can obtain it in the IP office in Vietnam uh, also very quickly. And you know that like any IP right registration does uh, go with the principal principal of first come first serve. So we highly recommend all the foreign investors to register their IP right in Vietnam as soon as possible. So you come first, you have the IP right protected first. So it is very uh, important that every foreign investor should care about. So the next part is some FBI guideline in Vietnam, and then I will give the forum to Filippo to just give you some information that you can check uh, online easily. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. So I guess uh, we have to check if there are uh, any questions. Thank you so much for this introduction. Is, uh, I was impressed to see how is a double almost the investment from China into Vietnam. As well, we had an important delegation of uh, Italian companies uh, uh, headed by the our uh, prime minister. Uh, there are any questions from uh, you, from anybody? Yeah, the most easy question uh, is uh, Livio Calabrese from, uh, from Italy. The most easy question is uh, whether it would be possible to share this presentation with us. I guess this is uh, not a problem at all. We, our, uh, uh, our team will send you the presentation as well of the, uh, together with the link of uh, our uh, YouTube.
YouTube channel where you can mm -hmm. see and uh, have all the related information. Uh, that one I want to, I have a question for, uh, uh, for V because I was impressed a couple of times that uh, uh, in Vietnam is not really required uh, to register the trademark in uh, Vietnamese language. Why so? There is not uh, uh, risk for the company who register only Latin character? Okay, because my feeling is uh, because, uh, for example, in China, we really suggest to our clients to register also Chinese uh, trademark, even if after they don't use it. But in order to be protected, we suggest to do that. Instead, in uh, Vietnam, we saw there is a trend not to use the Vietnamese trademarks. So I was I was wondering if is uh, this because Vietnam is a bit more open than China, <laughs> so they are using more international approach, or you still suggest to do it? Okay, I I, I think that's uh, the Vietnamese has recognized to register the trademark for some like physical uh, sample of the trademark that they can uh, identify. So that uh, we, you know, we need to check clearly for every, you know, every request from the client and sometimes it's on the play-by-play -play spaces. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tommaso, you want to add something about the tax point of view? From tax perspectives, uh, the, the system seems uh, quite uh, in line and similar to the one of China. So, frankly speaking, uh, being quite familiar with the Chinese one, I don't have uh, particular questions on, uh, on the taxes of your Maybe you can articulate a bit on the tax point of view? Uh, but well, the individual income tax is divided in, uh, in brackets. Uh, increase in brackets, uh, company income tax is at a fixed percentage and there are advantages for the small enterprises, uh, high-tech enterprises, uh, VAT is uh, levied on uh, both goods and services, it's, uh, everything is quite standard. Dividends. What about the pressure? What about the fiscal pressure? Is it lighter or heavier comparing uh, Europe or China? It's um, for some for some uh, taxes it's lighter for uh, dividends interests uh, let's say the withholding taxes is the same exactly the same as China so I'd say more or less is a standard taxation in the country. So in China at the moment this corporate income tax is at like twenty five percent. Twenty five. Instead in Vietnam. Uh, it's pretty it, aligned. I don't remember exactly. It is exactly twenty percent. I guess it's twenty percent. Right? It should be. It should be. Okay. And uh, the, um, the individual income tax goes up to 35%, so it's 7% uh, less, the, the, the maximum bracket is 7% lower than China, so that is an advantage. And uh, as I said, for the rest, for the withholding tax on dividends and interest, it's the same as 10% like China. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other question? Livio, if not, Hermano, Matteo, Mauro? 25% company income tax, same as China. 25, 25. 25. If not, we're going to thanks V, thanks Filippo, it was a great pleasure to have you, 
and uh, we're gonna share with you the presentation and the link of uh, in our YouTube channel. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.